Good morning, beautiful people. This is Jason Shades. Back to you again. Now, I know you all know me for music, and we usually hit um, and try to do music all the time. But I wanted you to know I'm, I'm a little bit more than, and I have a little bit more depth than just music. Now, one of the things is I am a huge fan, as you could see, of CoffeeZilla. If you've never seen him, you need to go check his channel out. I'm going to put a link down below to his channel. But this young man, I mean, he's younger, I don't know, probably in his 30s, not really a young man, I guess. But he's one of the most awesome investigative journalists, journalists I have ever seen. Um, he is absolutely a financial wizard when it comes to scams. Now... We're a generation who's older, like me, you know, if you're like me, you know, we're of an older generation. And we are the ones who are targeted a lot with these scams. So I wanted to kind of throw this out with this. And, and this is about a, a YouTuber bank. And now, I actually thought about getting involved in this a number of years ago when I saw it coming out. I saw a ton of YouTubers who are in the financial world recommending it and i thought hmm, this may be interesting it's kind of cool different concept so we're going to get into this i'm going to jump into con coffeezilla here today we're talking about a bank promoted by youtubers that's now become a casino and users can't get their money out this video is sponsored by yada say i mean talk about lucky i didn't get involved you can't get your money out of a bank Holy shit. Yada, Y-O-T-T-A. Yada Savings? Yada. Yada Savings app. Maybe you saw a couple people talk about this. Yes, I have seen people talk about Yada recently. Hey, my name's Daniel. Um, my wife and I, our family has 18,000 uh, in Yada that we can't get out. Over $60,000 frozen oh my God. up in Yada. $15,440.06 frozen in Yada. Oh. 7,270.60 frozen. $583.98,000 frozen in Yada. Oh. 94,000 give or take frozen. $46,699. Oh. Just think about this. What everybody is talking for the most what people are talking about these are life savings. You know, the $500 one, I get it. Not a lot. Except, think about it. That's rent. Or that's a car payment that you can't make. You know, if you're just a worker, you can't get that fucking money out to pay your car payment. They're going to come take your car. Or you can't make, you know, cover all the rent. Or whatever it is. I mean, other people... $98,000. That is such a big down payment on your house or your kid's college fund or whatever. I mean, that's just crazy. Yeah, it's a disaster. And we're going to break down what happened. Tells Let's me millions are stuck. Basics. A few years ago, Yada Savings advertised itself as a no lose lottery through YouTubers where you'd get a lottery ticket by saving money rather than spending it. It's called Gamified Savings, and some took it beyond a sponsorship and bought equity in the company because they liked the idea that much. The most viral example of this was Graham Stephan. Who and that's who I saw, Graham Stephan on this myself. I'm a fan of his. I watch a lot of his, his, his material. Um, the kid's really smart. Um, I agree with a lot of what he says, but Jesus Christ, I've never, you know, I got lucky I didn't get in. Who claimed that I bought a bank. I decided to invest an undisclosed amount, and now I can officially say I am a small owner in Yada Bank. Now these videos are deleted, as Yada has become more <laughs> than a harmless savings app, and users can't get their money out. But to understand what exactly happened, let's first go back to when they demanded an apology from me back in 2022. They made a brief appearance in a video called The Most Evil Business in the World, and for some reason, they didn't like the cameo. They said, quote, Given these false claims, we would like you to issue a statement in a video clarifying that your claim that Yada is a scam is false and misleading. Now, I never said that exactly, so I didn't apologize, but I found the next bit a bit more baffling. They tell me, quote, You could also conduct an interview with Adam Molis, the co-founder and CEO of Yada, if you wish, which I found odd. Either way, I decided to today take them up on their offer. See, this is what I love about him. He, you know, he digs in. He, 
you know, I don't know where he's getting his information. I don't know how he digs this shit up, but he's got people all over that he's actually digging in with. I mean, he's got to have a good staff, I'm assuming. I mean, if he's doing this stuff himself, good God, when do you sleep? Two years later, when I checked back in on Yada and found customers' accounts have been frozen and their website looked more like a casino than a no-lose lottery. Holy shit. On their app, Yada now offers roulette, dice, blackjack that you can lose money on. Now, honestly, I was shocked by that. A bank with blackjack. What the fuck? This. this is the same company that's saying, play the no-lose lottery, regular lotteries are scams, they prey on innocent people. Now they're offering gambling. So of course, I reached out to the CEO and he told me Yada is not actually gambling. Quote, we decided to pivot the business into sweepstakes for sweepstakes. this year. For a bank, sweepstakes. Yeah, let's do a bank with sweepstakes. You can either put your money in and actually get it out, get it out with interest, or you never get your money. That's the sweepstakes. Fuck, I'll go play the lottery. Sweepstakes is not gambling. We worked extensively with lawyers in the space to build out the program. Now, I don't know which lawyer told Yada blackjack isn't gambling, but it's time to get your money back. All Yada is really doing is running a loophole. The CEO says you can't actually buy Yada Cash, but this is a very sneaky claim because one way to get Yada Cash is by Make purchasing tokens on the app. These tokens are pointless, except that they come with free Yada Cash. Spend $10, get 13 free Yada Cash to gamble with. The more you spend, the more free Yada Cash you get. It's really just a stupid loophole to claim that this is all a sweepstakes and right. that blackjack, dice, and roulette are somehow not gambling, which is, of course, ridiculous. But most interesting, I think, is the admission from the Yada CEO that, quote, yes, this is at odds with the initial mission to encourage savings. The savings-based wow. business model wasn't working. So we The savings-based business model wasn't working. You mean the bank wasn't working? How the fuck did you do it wrong then? Because every bank since the beginning of time has always worked. There's a reason why banks work is they have the goddamn money. They have all the fucking money in the world. What is the banking model didn't work? What the fuck is wrong with you? How does your banking model not work? You know, that's like. Try to tell me if you build a casino, you're going to go bankrupt. Why? People are kind of, oh, who did that? Hmm. Because people are coming to you to hand you money. Well, I just want entertainment. Here's my money. And you can't make a profit? You're an idiot. We decided to pivot. But pivot to what? To the exact thing your system was designed to fight? Stupid lotteries that waste people's <laughs> money? And you pivot to just... Getting people hooked on actual gambling? Is that it? It's like me starting a methadone clinic only to pivot to selling heroin because that's where the real money is. It's utterly <laughs> ridiculous, and I told their CEO as that. much. And to my surprise, he responded asking me for help. Quote, you can make your own moral judgment of whatever you want. That's fine. But the issue that matters is that our customers haven't been able to access their funds for nearly three weeks. I think you can help. Oh, and let me guess how he can help. Tell the customers not to ask for their money. Honestly, he's right. I do want to help Yada's customers not getting their money, but I can't ignore that Yada is a savings app that became a casino, the exact thing they were fighting, and that's disgusting. Two, YouTubers brought people this into just... a financial product that is now broken, and rather than address it, most of them have gone radio silent. So this is the number one thing I see constantly, and I love his take on stuff i love his breakdown on everything it, the guy's brilliant he does his work you know but don't trust anything on youtube you know for god's sakes do not buy any you know anything from anybody on youtube because i tell you what 99.99 percent .99 it's got to be a scam unless it's merch where you actually get a t-shirt or a hat or something like that because like the hat here I got that, yeah, from um, Knox. I bought it from Knox Hill, trying to help and support his channel. Absolutely. But I got something for it. Whereas, what the fuck, you know, don't be buying shit from YouTubers, especially the fuckers that tell you, oh, yeah, there's a bank, or here's some fucking, you know, 
um, you know, merch, not even merch, it's the fucking tokens and shit, you know, or the, um, cryptocurrency. Oh, stay the fuck away from crypto. Holy shit that none of it is real. It's all a fucking scam. Some are deleting their original videos. Now, of course, most of these YouTubers who promoted it had no idea Yada was going to pivot from savings to gambling. They just got their paycheck. accounts would be frozen. I'm, I get it. You, you got sponsored. I don't necessarily hold you responsible. If you, even if you did your due diligence, okay, it's a new bank. This is what they're trying to do. I get it. And they got paid advertising dollars. <sighs> you know, believe it, don't believe it. You know, fuck you. But yeah. But this is all the more reason that YouTubers should not be getting in the business of promoting financial products, especially finance YouTubers. Yes. I've spoken to a lot of these people. They all tell me the same thing. Oh, I feel so bad. It's not my fault. I had no idea. And that's all fine. But when people bring up your name as an explicit reason they got into this savings account, it starts to ring a lot more hollow. Yeah. So my brother actually told me about it. I'm pretty sure he found it through the Graham video. So that would have been Graham, Graham Stephan. Uh, Stephen Graham video. Graham Stephan's. Graham Stephan video. Graham oh. Stephan came out with a, uh, a video. Graham Stephan, Andre Jack, guys that I like as, you know, financial YouTubers. And Graham Stephan's is usually a pretty decent guy. I mean, he's got a few, uh, a few million, um, the subs and usually like a million plus views per video you know i get it i mean and i get it he probably got a big paycheck to promote this i understand i'm not holding him responsible i'm not you know you know maybe he could come out with a statement saying he whoa this was a horrible thing i'm sorry yeah this is the reason i hold financial youtubers to a higher standard Overwhelmingly, I find them to be more influential. Although, I have to say again, I don't hold them or anyone else personally responsible. I hold them all irresponsible for promoting financial products. This is not like promoting Dollar Shave Club, where people get a product and that's it. If the company goes bust, it doesn't matter. Financial products are different. You are asking people to put their money somewhere. If in five years that goes bust, people are going to remember you advertised it to them. Yeah. And if you're uncomfortable with that, if you think your bank might blow up in five years, don't promote it. Shill a VPN and have a nice day. But if you insist on telling people the best place to put their money, you better not be upset when they listen. By the way, yeah. as I was editing this video, someone released a podcast sponsored by, you guessed it, Yada. Yada. This episode is brought to you. Holy shit, they're still promoting it. By Yada. This is despite the fact that currently withdrawals are frozen. And now I want to pivot myself and talk about frozen funds, which is wow. a huge problem that goes beyond Yada and influencers. Since early May, many fintechs, May? including Yada and Juno and May. Okay, when is this video came? It's May, but you know, the video has been out for, oh, it's been out for a month. So it would have been in June because it's July right now. Holy shit, May, June, you, you couldn't get your money out for two months, probably three by now. Any others have had all their user funds frozen. Up to 200,000 accounts are affected. And it's for many reasons that wow. surprised users. See, most people saw these companies like Yada as banks. 200,000 accounts. That's got to be in the millions, in the millions of dollars that are frozen. And I bet you it's because it, it's, a, it's not FDIC insured. It and there's a run on the bank and they locked it up. Remember, Graham Stephan even said, I bought a bank. I just bought a bank. But this isn't quite accurate. These are fintech companies, not banks. They're not holding anyone's money. They're not FDIC insured. They okay. have a bank they work with that is FDIC insured, and that's where your money is sent to. In this case, the main bank is called Evolve. Normally, this distinction is supposed doesn't to go matter, there. But when things go wrong, it makes all the difference. So does the distinction that fintech companies like Yada don't work directly with Evolve. They have a middleman called Synapse. Now, I want you to think of Synapse as an adapter from old tech to new tech. It's kind of like your iPhone dongle. Remember that? Connecting okay. a lightning cable to a headphone jack. That's Synapse, connecting banks to fintech. And 
I know I'm not exactly an expert on this. So I brought in someone who is to explain what happened. If you understand that, I don't understand why there's a middleman involved in it. It doesn't make any sense. Um, but I'm betting that's also a legal thing to make it so they don't have to be FDIC insured. Happened because the next part I'd be to bet you that's gets kind of confusing. How they got going. My name is Jason Mikula. You know, I spent about over a decade in fintech and banking, including at Goldman Sachs. So I have I have some experience in the sector. What actually has gone wrong here? So the sort of proximate cause was on Saturday, May 11th, uh, Synapse, which is this technology middleware provider or banking as a service provider revoked Evolve Bank's access to what in the court filings is being referred to as the dashboard, uh, which is basically Synapse's IT systems, oh. uh, including actual ledger information. And so when Synapse revoked access to that information on Saturday, May 11th, Evolve functionally froze all of those programs by okay. ceasing to process payments. That makes sense now. Okay, so now I I get that because I've worked in a banking. Synapse is basically the software company that handles the deposits and the withdrawals, but they locked Yada out from that. So they can't deposit anything. They can't withdraw anything. They don't have access to their software system that connects to the bank. So that makes a lot of sense. So if they're not connected to the bank, you can't do anything. Let me guess. They didn't pay their fucking bill. So Evolve's decision to respond to Synapse revoking that access is what led to users being unable to access their funds beginning on May 11th and continuing through to the present. People are saying, oh, it's FDIC insured. Nope. Why isn't that working? Yeah, so it is end users confusion is entirely understandable, right? One of the great successes of the American banking sector and American Gosh. banking regulation is that you, generally speaking, don't have to worry about whether or not your money is safe. However, that in this case, uh, and it's, it's not the only case, has engendered some confusion for end users who see FDIC insured and, and read that as, this is safe, my money's safe, I'm gonna get my money back. Now, what is FDIC insurance and what does it do? It protects depositors and users in the event that a bank fails. A bank has not failed here. Uh, and so there is- So I, okay, that makes sense. So the bank hasn't failed because the bank still has the money. It's the middleman that's cut the top guy, the lotto or lottery bank out there's no the lottery bank hasn't failed the fdic to step in wow if evolve had failed what a fucking the loophole. fdic would step in holy shit seize the bank uh and sort of figure out the next steps that's obviously not what's unfolding here right so if you have money frozen it is fdic insured from a bank failure but in this case no banks bank has failed. Haven't failed it's the in-between layer that has meaning your funds are stuck until this is fixed. But it's not exactly wow. clear when that will be because Evolve and Synapse can't agree on who owes what. The founder of Synapse says it's all in Evolve's control. We are doing everything we can to release funds. Meanwhile, Evolve says Synapse's records are wrong. Quote, recent ledgers and data do not align with the actual movement of funds in and out of Evolve. Basically, someone is lying or even worse, doesn't know what the truth is, and this isn't a disagreement and the computer's about all fucked up. It's $150 million being argued about. But a $150 million, oh my According God. According to new reporting from the information, such discrepancies were known about for at least two years before the revoked dashboard and Synapse's bankruptcy. Meaning this could have been avoided, but it wasn't. Leaving a bankruptcy trustee to pick up the pieces and hundreds of thousands of accounts frozen. And we wow. don't know who owes who what or when we'll find out. But all I have the to middle say is, went out who of business. cares? People need their money back. They were told these fintech programs were safe. Now they're stuck. Look, after talking to the this people, this is offended, just amazing. I get it. Banking is complicated, especially as I spoke to Jason. That became super clear. But historically, this hasn't stopped us from helping the elite when complex <laughs> banking problems come up. Remember Silicon Valley Bank? And look, I know it's a different oh. story, but back then we moved. Yeah, Kevin 
yeah, the Silicon County Bank, Silicon Valley Bank, the the entire government jumped in and bailed them out. The banking crash, what was that, 2010, 2011, the, I was working for Wells Fargo right after that, but Wells Fargo was given a shit ton of money to buy Wachovia by the government, and then, you know, it's like, oh, so it'd be like me giving you my credit card and telling you, hey, why don't you go buy yourself a car, but just pay me back when you get a chance. What the fuck? You know, I mean, that was insane days. And it's still going on in the background. I mean, now everybody's got a scam. Heaven and earth to make sure startup founders got their money back beyond the FDIC insurance limit out of concern for the rich and powerful we bent the rules. Yep. And all I'm saying is I get that this is also not a traditional FDIC insurance case. But dare I say we give regular Americans the same level of urgency and empathy we gave to Silicon Valley founders when we decided to bend oh, the rules no. for them. It's been three weeks with no end in sight and these people have mortgages to pay, taxes, bills, and quibbling about the middleman or the bank whose fault it is is to miss the point. Trust me, there's plenty of blame to go around in this story. But yeah, can you, I mean, just, just can you imagine that? You can't get your money out. They're bitching and squabbling over who's got the money. Meanwhile, the government doesn't give a shit, you know, because, oh, it's only you who's got $98,000. It's not like you're important, you know. Now, if you were a billionaire, we would come in and bail you out because you're a billionaire and you're much more important than, you know, somebody's life savings. For the immediate future, let's focus on getting these people their money back before they're punished for something that isn't their fault. Because time is of the essence. Even if these people eventually get their money back. How many, I'm just curious, how many of these people have lost the opportunity to buy a house because they can't get their damn down payment out? You know, or they lost the opportunity to invest or they lost the opportunity to pay for school because, you know, the, the kids' school came up and they've got their, you know, money in their in school, you know, for their school loans or something and they can't pay any of it. I mean, wow, that's just could have fucked up so many people. The win matters just as much as people with frozen accounts told me. I mean, it means everything to me. I, I don't you know. know. How did he get these people? Where, how did you find, you know, how did CoffeeZilla personally find these people to be able to interview them? I mean, that's, that's, that is some work, man. I'm impressed. I have, I wasn't able to pay rent for this month. I wasn't oh. able to pay my bills. I quit my job. I quit my career to go into business for my family and my savings is my, uh, oh. my safety net for doing that, for making such a crazy decision. And your safety net's gone. So it means a lot. We really have no safety net. I mean, even if that money's not gone, it's gone for us for now. My wife and I have been saving for our first home. If this takes There's months, a house. years to drag out, it's going to delay our home. I've, uh... Man, can you imagine? I mean, with the prices of houses going up, you've lost... They could have lost $100,000 because it's like, I could have bought this house this year, but now it's because of this shit, the house has gone up a hundred grand been saving essentially for three to four years and uh, was saving up for a wedding and oh. uh, to buy a home and you know as soon as this stuff happened um, that was actually the first week that I needed to pay off the deposits for the wedding so oh. Oh. Pretty, it hurt me quite a lot I mean that's your fiance is going to be hurt but you know what you guys can get married it's even though it's not the big pretty wedding, but the house part, you know, that's rough. Huh, didn't respond, no shit. Yada responded. All regulations seem to be pointing fingers at each other. Yeah. Uh, they are not saying there hasn't been a bank failure, so it's nothing... It's not their problem. Hopefully, hopefully your coverage can help. You know, and this is, and I'm going to put the link down below because this, 
this guy is absolutely amazing. I love what he digs in. And, you know, the way he goes on to these scammers, you know, these, these YouTube scammers out there, I mean, I love him. He just beats the shit out of them. You know, he just beats the living fuck out of these uh, these scammers, these especially these YouTube scammers like, you know, Jake and Paul or whatever their name is, you know, douchebag and brother, you know. But, uh, yeah, that... I know this was different. I know that we kind of did something different, but I, I just wanted you to take a look at this guy. I, I don't know if you subscribe to him, but I absolutely love this guy. He's really, really interesting. And it's information that I think we all need in, when it comes to our financial lives. Absolutely. Um, you know, we're going to get back to music and everything, but I just wanted to kind of uh, do, do a video on that because I thought, you know what, let's see what else we can do and, you know, try something different All right well with that you go have a great day i'm gonna have a wonderful day too but thank you don't forget to subscribe don't forget to hit the like button and put some comments down if you want to do some you know if you want me to do some other reactions or look at other pe things you know definitely we can play with some other ideas All right have a good one Bye bye